Hey there, Angry Faithful. I just wanted to drop in, bend your ear a little bit, get your attention. So if you're not listening, drop what you're doing and pay attention to me. Because I'm here to inform you that not only can you get your daily, maybe if you're binging it, I'm not sure, that's entirely up to you, but you can multiply your doses of angry me fuckery by paying attention to all of the platforms upon which you can find either the dulcet tones of my voice and David's voice or my pretty face and David's not so pretty face. Anyways, digressing. We, not only on we are on YouTube, we are on Spotify, we're on Rumble, we're on Google, Apple Podcast. We have a TikTok page. We're on Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Facebook. So if you find yourself fuckery deprived, curl up with a nice hot mug of shut the fuck up and just listen, open those ear holes and be prepared to be cream pied like it's the first time. Thanks for listening. Welcome, Angry Faithful. Today on Psychos and Social Pass, we're going to go over the Ruby Ridge incident with Randy Weaver. Uh, we're just going to go over a little bit over Weaver and then what happened with him. Hold on real quick. Let me pull that stuff. Okay. Pouring whites. Uh, we're just gonna go over what uh, who Weaver was a little bit, and then uh, the incidents that happened at Ruby Ridge. Now, uh, when uh, Randall Weaver was an American survivalist and a former Iowa uh, factory worker, Green Beret, who uh, was a Sensen participant in 1992 Ruby Ridge standoff at his cabin near Naples, uh, Idaho. Idaho. That resulted in his death of his wife and son. Weaver was charged with murder, conspiracy, and assault, as well as other crimes. He was acquitted of most charges, but convicted by two weapon charges and sent 18 months in prison. Now, that's who re, uh, Randall Weaver was. Uh, now, the Ruby Ridge Siege. Uh, let me see here. Get to the, the development of it. Uh, Randy Weaver, a former uh, uh, Iowa factory worker and U.S. Uh, Army Green Beret, moved with his wife and four children to northern Idaho during the 19, uh, 1980s so they could uh, homeschool his children and escape what he and his wife believed as a corrupt world. Uh, in 1978, Vicky, the religious leader of the family, began to have a Recurring dream of living on a mountaintop of believing that the apocalypse was immense. So basically, she's the one that started the stuff. She's the one that gave him the apple. After the birth of their son, Samuel, the Weavers began selling their belongings and learning, learning how to live without electricity. They brought 20 acres of lamb on the Ruby Ridge in 1983 and began building a cabin. The property was in uh, Banger County on a hillside on, uh, on Ruby Creek opposite of Caribou uh, Ridge, north, northwest nearby uh, Naples. Naples. Uh, in 1984, Randy Weaver and neighbor uh, Terry Gen uh, Kenson had a dispute over a $3,000 land deal. Kenson's lost the ensued lawsuit and was ordered to pay Weaver the additional two thousand one hundred and court costs and damages. Kenson wrote a letter to the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Secret Service 
and the county sheriff in which uh, alleged that Weaver had threatened to kill the Pope, John Paul II, President Ronald Reagan, and the Idaho governor, John B. Evans, uh, in January 1985. The FBI and Secret Service launched an investigation into the allegations. Investigation not into the allegations. Man, that rhymes. Uh, that Weaver had made threats against Ronald Reagan and other government and law enforcement, uh, enforcement officials. On February 12th, Weaver and his wife were interviewed by two FBI agents, two Secret Service agents, and a Bounty County Sheriff and his, uh, and his chief investigator. The Secret Service had been told that Weaver was a member of the Aryan Nation, uh, and that he had a large weapon cache at his residence. Weaver denied these allegations, and the government filed no charges. On three or four uh, occasions, the Weaver had attended Aryan Nation meetings at Hyden Lake, where there was a uh, compound for government resistors and right supremacists and separatists. An investigation noted that Weaver associated with Frank uh frank kumar hold on i want to get his name right Comnick. <laughs> Comnick. who was known to associate with members of the aryan nation we were told the investigators that neither he nor kumrick was a member of our aryan nation but he stated that kumrick was associated with the covenant the sword and the arm of the lord which uh, it's a far right militant uh, organization dedicated to Christian ideology, uh, ideology, and for uh, survivalism. Active in the United States in 1970 and the early 80s, the uh, Baptist, blah, blah, blah. We'll go back to the case. Anyways. On February 28th, Randy and Vicki Weaver filed an affinant with the county courthouse alleged that their personal enemies were plotting to provoke the FBI into attacking and killing the Weaver family. Doesn't sound crazy at all. Yes, it sounds very uh, It sounds very crazy. Uh, on May 6th, the Weaver uh, sent President Ranger a letter claiming that their enemies may have sent Reagan a threatening letter on a uh, forged signature. Uh, no evidence of such letters surfaced, but in 1992, the prosecutor decided that in 1985 letter uh, as an overact of the uh, Weaver family conspiracy against the federal government. Uh, the Bureau of Tobacco, uh, uh, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms first became aware of the Weaver in July 1986 when he was introduced to a confidential informant to the ATF at a meeting of the White Aryan Congress. Uh, sorry, my throat's getting a little parched. Uh, the informant portrayed himself as a weapons dealer. Weaver had been involved in meetings with uh, by Kumnick, uh, the original target of the ATF investigation. It was Weaver's first time at this Congress. Over the uh, next three years, Weaver and the informant met several times. July 1980, uh, 1989, Weaver invited the informant at his uh, home to discuss uh, forming a group to fight the zeal uh Zena. every time i see this word i just it's just messing with me i, I went over this several times try to get this right zionist, organized zionist organization government uh referring the uh referring to the u.s government in 1989 the atf claimed that we uh, sold the information to, uh, of two sawed-off shotguns, that overall length of gun, uh, gun barrel, uh, then I had to set the limit for the federal law. Basically, with shotguns, you're only supposed to have, technically, a uh, 16-inch barrel. I think it is. But I'm not getting into that. 
And uh, November 1989, Weaver uh, accused the ATF informant of being a spy for the police. Weaver later wrote he had been warned by Rico V, the informant's handler, uh, Herbert uh, Burley, ordered him to have no further contact with Weaver. Eventually, the FBI informant, Rico Valentino, outed the uh, ATF informant to the uh, Aryan Nation security, which is why he had distrust with government because everybody was out to get them. Uh, In June 1990, Burley attempted to use the saw off shotgun charges as leverage to get Weaver to act as an informant for his investigation to, into the Iron Nation. Weaver refused to become a snitch, and at the ATF filed the gun, uh, gun charges in June 1990. The ATF alleged that Weaver was a bank robber with criminal, uh, criminal convictions. Those claims were false, and at the time, Weaver had no criminal record. The 1995 Senate investigation found Weaver not uh, was not a suspect in any bank robberies. So if you feel that you're out to get you, some people, they actually are out to get you, depending on how much they're out to get you. A federal grand jury indicted Weaver in uh, December 1990 for making uh, making and possessing, but not for selling illegal weapons. In October 1989, the ATF concluded in, uh, it would be too dangerous for agents to arrest Weaver at his property. In January 1991, the ATF uh, agents possessed uh, posed a breakdown motor uh, posed as bro- broke down motorist and arrested Weaver when he and Vicky uh, stopped to assess, uh, assist. Weaver was told of the charges against him released on bail and told that he uh, that at his trial uh, would begin on February 19th, 1991. On January 22nd, the judge in the case uh, appointed attorney ever Hoffer uh, Hommister as Weaver uh, legal representation. Same day, Weaver called uh, probation officer uh, Carl Richardson and told him that he had been instructed to contact Richardson's on that day. Richardson did not have the case file at the time, so he asked Weaver to leave his contact information and said he would contact him when she paperwork. Court Richardson, Weaver did not give him a telephone number. Hoffer Mister uh, sent Weaver a letter on January 19th, January 31st, and January 5th, asking Weaver to contact him to work on his defense within the federal court system. On February 5th, trial date was uh, changed from February 19th to the 20th, giving the uh, participant more to- uh, travel time following the federal holiday the court clerk sent the parties a letter informing them of the date changes but the notice uh, was not sent directly to weaver only to hopmaster on february 7th richens sent weaver a letter indicating that he had the case file and needed to talk to weaver this letter uh enormously said that we uh, weaver's court date was March 20th. On February 8th, Hoffman an attempt to contact Weaver by letter informing him the trial had begun uh, w- was to begin on February 20th and that Weaver needed to contact him immediately. Hoffmister also made several calls to individuals who knew Weaver, asking them to have Weaver call him. Hoffmister told U.S. Uh, District uh, Court Judge Harold Lehman Raynal. Uh, Ryan, sorry. Get my my throat unparched. Uh, that he had been unable to reach Weaver before uh, the scheduled court date. When Weaver did not appear in court on February 20th, Ryan issued a bench warrant for failure to appear in court. 
February 26th, Ken Keller, a reporter for the Cullington Valley Times, uh, telephoned the U.S. probation officer and asked whether we were did not uh, why uh, asked whether we were did not show in court on February 20th because the letter Richen sent had an incorrect date. Upon uh, finding a copy of the letter, the chief probation officer uh, Terrence Hummel contacted Ron's clerk and informed them that the incorrect date in the letter. Hummel. Uh, also contacted the U.S. Marshal Service and Weaver's attorney informing them both of the error. Judge Ryan, however, refused to withdraw the bench warrant. The U.S. Marshal agreed to put, uh, pull off, uh, put off executing the warrant until March 20th in order to see whether uh, Weaver would show up in court on that day. If you were to show up on March 20th, the Department of Justice claimed that all indications are uh, are that the warrant would be uh, would have been dropped, but insisted the U.S. Attorney Office called a grand jury on March 14th. The U.S. Attorney Office did not inform the grand jury of Richardson's letter, and the grand jury issued an uh, indictment for failure to appear. See, this is where it all comes together of the reason why this whole thing got fucked up now in ryan's case he should have just showed up even if he did i and keep contact with your lawyer if he kept contact with his lawyer and lived in a civilized world where you can contact by at least phone I always have a phone or something for emergencies, but he didn't. He he was all on the only way to contact him because he decided that the world's going to end and everything's going to go against him, which kind of was on this instance. But it's a contact thing. They couldn't contact him over stuff. And the stuff that he got, well, if he actually listened to his lawyer about the court date and not his parole officer, I mean, if the court date from the lawyer says, hey, be there on the 20th or 19th, go there on the 19th. Oh, I have to come back on the 20th? Okay. Waste of gas, but okay. I'll find out on the 20th. Okay. It's it's just a whole thing of fuck around. That's one on the government's part. Uh, when we were uh, case passed uh, from the ATF, the U.S. Marshals, no one informed the Marshals that the ATF had attempted to solicitate Weaver as an informant. As the law enforcement arms of uh, arm of the federal court, the U.S. Marshals were response to uh, re- arrest, bringing Weaver. Uh, now uh, considered a fugitive. We were simply uh, stayed in his remote home, uh, threatening to resist any attempt to take him by force. Weaver was known to have uh, intense distrust of government, which, yeah. Uh, the enormous uh, Richardson lever is believed to have been the culprit uh this statement and may have... Uh, contribute to Weaver's reluctance to appear in trial, which, yeah, I I could see it. He still should have gone. Uh, He was suspected that he would not have a fair trial in court, and the uh, inconsistency messages from the government and his lawyer, he began to think that he, there was a conspiracy against him. Weaver came to believe that he would not receive a fair trial if he were to appear in court, which all this stuff was actually orchestrated by the ATF and them fucking up. Back 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 in the nineties and eighties, they tried every Bob and Wee, which they still do to a point, but a lot of times they don't do that because of incidents like this. This is two, the second end. We'll go over the other instance next week with the David Koresh stuff.
which he was just a shitbag. Shit pump. Uh, U.S. Marshal officers made a series of attempts to have Weaver surrender peacefully, but he refused to leave his cabin. Weaver negotiated with the uh, U.S. Marshals Ron uh, Evans and W. Warrant Mays and uh, David Hunt uh, through th- uh, third parties on March 5th to October 12th, 1991. When uh, Assistant U.S. Attorney uh, Ron Howen directed that the negotiation, uh, negotiation uh, the case, the U.S. Attorney directed that all the negotiation go through Hoffmister, uh, but Weaver refused to talk with him. Marshals began preparing plans to capture Weaver to stand trial on the weapons charges and his failure to appear in the uh, correct trial date. Uh, although marshals stopped the negotiations as ordered, they made other contact. On March 4th, 1994, the U.S. Marshals Ron Evans and Jack Clover drove to the Weaver property and spoke with Weaver, opposed as real, uh, real estate prospects. On March 27th, 1992, meeting with the U.S. Marshal headquarters, Art Rudder codenamed the Operation Northern Exposure. Surveillance team was dispatched. The camera set up to record activity at Weaver's residence. Marshals observed that Weaver and his family response to vehicles and other visitors by taking up armed positions around the cabin until the vig- visitors were recognized. Beginning on February 1991, the U.S. Marshals developed a threat source profile. Which this pro- uh, profile was put into the report in, 19- in the 1995 report of the subcommittee of the Senate Judiciary Committee on this whole entire fuck up. Uh, the subcommittee is concerned that as Marshall's investigation, the Weaver case uh, learned facts that uh, conducted information that previously had been provided, they did not and to adequately interrogate their updated knowledge into their overall assessment, basically treating it as a living document. A living document is basically also known as an evergreen document or a uh, thematic document. is a document that continually edits and updates as uh, an example of a living document is an article basically like Wikipedia. Uh, it's constantly updated. Uh, like if they find out that George Washington didn't die on a certain day, they they'll just go in and re redo it, and they just treat it as a living document. That, that's what a living document is. Now, there was actually an instance. Uh, that they put in that report, uh, the Rivera helicopter incident. Now, this is this is really strange. Following a fo- uh, flyover by a uh, hired helicopter uh, for uh, Geraldo Rivera, now it can be told television show on April uh, April eighteenth, nineteen ninety two. The U.S. Marshal received media reports that Weaver had shot the helicopter. That day in Iowa, U.S. Marshals were installing surveillance cameras overlooking the Weaver property. Uh, The field report for April 18, 1992, followed by uh, Marshal W. Warrant Mays, reported seeing a helicopter near the Weaver property but uh, but did not hear any shots. And in an interview with a, a news reporter... Carl DeHeller, DeHeller, what? D-U-N. Oh, uh, Carl DeHealing, uh newspaper. Uh, Lever uh, denied that anyone had fired at the helicopter. 
When interviewed by the FBI, the helicopter pilot Richard Weasley said that Weaver had not filed, uh, fired at the helicopter. Uh, reports with the RRTF, the OR, uh, OPR, said when the incident uh, was pres- uh, presented to the uh, uh, and documented of Weaver was presented to the grand jury. The uh, prosecution had evidence that no shots had been fired. Basically, Geraldo Rivera, which we all know is a constant liar, even though he's he, he's basically back in the day he was a big shock reporter. Uh, he even tried to. He had this whole episode where he was opening up. Uh, uh, God. Scarfaces, not the T movie, but the Al Capone, uh, Al Capone's uh, safe. I spent shit ton of money just getting all this stuff together and everything, and finding out there's nothing in it. But he was a big shock person, uh, investigative reporter, and a lot of the stuff he lied about. Now. The encounter at the Weaver cabin uh, on August 21st, 1992, six marshals was sent to scout uh, the area to determine a uh, susceptible place away from the cabin to apprehend and arrest Weaver. The marshals dressed in military camouflage were equipped with night vision goggles and M16 rifles. Uh, D.U.S.M. Uh, Art Roddick, uh, Larry Cooper, and William F. Bill uh Deegan formed a reconnaissance team while uh David Hunt, Jofus Thomas, and Frank Norris formed an uh, observation post team the ridge north of the cabin. At one point, Richard threw two rocks at Weaver's cabin to test the dog's reaction. The action provoked the dogs. Weaver's friend, uh Kevin Harris, and Weaver's 14-year-old son, Samuel, or Sammy, emerged following, uh, following the dog striker to, uh, striker to investigate. Harris and the young Weaver said that they were hoping contact from OP team, but later took up hidden defense positions. Later, the OP team and the Weavers claimed the dogs were alerted to the recon team in the woods after neighbors at the foot of the mountain started their pickup truck. Uh, the recon team uh, retreated through the woods and a Y uh, jurisdi- uh, jurisdiction and the trails 500 yards west of the cabin, out of the side of the cabin. And by the way, there's people that actually uh, use the metric system, so it's 460 meters. Because we actually have people that listen to us overseas. Uh, what's the cabin? Out of sight of the cabin. Sammy and Harris follow Stryker on foot through the woods while Randy, also on foot, took a separate uh, logging trail. Vicky, Sarah, Rachel, and baby uh, Elizabeth remained at the cabin. The OP team were Anxious at first, but then relaxed. Randy and Carolyn, the marshals at the Y. Uh, Roderick claimed that to have yelled, back off, yes, marshals, upon uh, sighting Weaver. And Cooper said he uh, had shouted, stop, U.S. marshals, by their account. Sammy and Stryker came out of the woods about minutes later. When the marshals positioned to... Uh, Revealed, uh, revealed by the dog striker, a yellow laboratory retriever. Roderick uh, shot the dog dead. Seeing this, Sammy reached, uh, reacted by shooting in the direction of Roderick. Cooper then shot towards Sammy Weaver and Kevin Harris, who both uh, uh, sought cover. Harris, once finding cover uh, behind a tree stump, then returned fire with one um, uh, unaimed shot, which eventually killed uh, William Francis Bill Deegan. 
Sammy Weaver. Hold on real quick. I'm gonna... There we go. Sorry, I gotta find my place again. Uh, Sammy Weaver now retreated up uh, a hill, then shot uh, was shot in the back and killed by Cooper. The little ballistic report showed that 19 rounds were fired during the fight. Roderick fired one shot from his M16 A1, which killed Stryker, the dog, by entering uh, his body two inches from the dog's anus. <laughs> wow. And exiting the chest. Jesus. That is so fucked up. Then Sammy fired three rounds. It was 22, uh, 223 Ruger Mini 14 at Roderick. Dugan fired 17 from his M16 at Harris and Weaver while moving at least 21 feet or 6.4 meters. And Cooper fired six from his nine millimeter Colt machine gun, submachine gun, uh, at Harris and Weaver. Harris then fired two uh, from his 30 odd six M1917 infield rifle, striking and killing Duggan. After federal agents began firing, Sammy was killed by a shot in the back while retreating. Harris fired one uh, unnamed shot and killed uh, Dagan. The origin, uh, the origin of the shot that killed Sammy was officially uh, was critical concern to all investigators. At the time of the investigation of Ruby Ridge report in 1996, the U.S. Subcommittee on Terrorism, Technology, and Government, chaired by Senator Alan Spector, if he's still in office oh I mean, okay spent 20 years as a center anyways sorry uh observed that the government uh government's petition at trial that Cooper had fired the shot. The subcommittee uh, engaged additional experts and un unlimitedly decided to draw a final conclusion that the, uh, the Justice Department's Ruby Ridge Task Force reported that the office, uh, offices of pro uh, professional responsibility stated the evidence uh, suggests uh, but does not establish that uh, the shot that killed Sammy Weaver was fired from the uh, by Cooper. It was concluded there was no indication he uh, intentionally shot Weaver. Reporter Jesse Waller and his Ruby Ridge, the truth, the tragedy of Randy Weaver's family, concluded that Cooper fired the bullet that killed Sammy Weaver. So uh, reporters get it wrong. 1997, uh, Bounty County Sheriff uh, Greg Sprungle conducted an uh, independent search of the Y. And his investigators, Lucien Hag, discovered and conferred that a bullet found in, search, uh, in that search matched Cooper's 9mm cut so, uh, Colt so, Southern machine gun and contained fighters that matched uh, Sammy's uh, shirt. Conclusively proven that Cooper shot the 14 year old Sammy Weaver in the back as he retreated. Harrison Federal Agents uh, account differ as to who fired first. In 1993 trial over the charges of De uh, Deegan's death, prosecutors alleged that Harris uh, had fired the first uh, shot. Harris asserted in self defense and was, was acquitted. On cross examination by the defense, ballistic uh, experts called by the prosecution testified that the physical evidence constructed neither 
the prosecutors nor the defense theory of that gunfight. Martin Flanker testified that uh, Roderick fired the shot and or shots that killed Stryker, the dog, that Duncan fired the shot that hit Sammy in the right elbow, that Harris shot and killed uh, Deegan, and that Cooper probably shot and killed Sammy. Roderick and Cooper stated that Stryker preceded, uh, preceded Harris and Sammy out in the woods. They said uh, Deegan challenged Harris, who turned, shot, and fatally wounded Deegan before he uh, could fire uh, first fire. Fire first. They said Roderick shot the dog once. Sammy fired twice at Roderick, and Roderick uh, returned fire. Roderick and uh, Cooper testified that they heard multiple gunshots from uh, the Weaver party. Cooper testified that he fired two... He fired two, three uh, shot bursts at Harris and saw Harris fall like a sack of potatoes with leaves uh, flying up in front of him, presumably from the impact of the round. Cooper saw, uh, saw cover. He testified that he saw Sammy run and radioed uh, OP team member David Hunt that he wounded and killed Harris. After the firefight at the Y, Hunt, uh, Hunt Thomas went uh, to the neighbor's house to call for assistance from the U.S. Marshals Crisis Center. Norris Cooper and Roderick uh, stayed with Deegan's body at the Y. Randy and Vicky went to the Y and retrieved Sammy's body. Randy, Vicky, and Harris placed the body in the uh, guest cabin near the main cabin. From 11.15 a.m. onward, Hunt reported uh, to the crisis center to Washington, D.C. that no uh, further garden fire was heard. Now, now this is the siege of conversation. Maybe if I hear it, I can understand it. Controversy. Controversy. I had it in my head. I had to have something to say. It. <sighs> Mentally challenged pokes sometimes. Uh, and then after my after the gunfight on August uh, 21st at 11.20 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. Pacific time zone. Okay. Uh, the Dumas Hunt uh, requested immediate support from Idaho uh, law enforcement and also alerted the FBI by notifying it uh, that a marshal has been killed. Following Hunt, Hunt, Hunt's phone call, the Marshal Service Crisis Center was activated under the direct uh, direction of Duke Smith. Associated Director for Operations. Marshal Service Special Operations Group, SOG, was uh, alerted to deploy. In response to the U.S. Marshal's call, the uh, Boundary County Sheriff Office mobilized. Also, in response to U.S. Marshal request, Idaho Governor Cecil Aaron and Duras declared a state of emergency in Baylor County. Allowing, uh, allowing the use of Idaho's uh, Idaho National Guard Armory at Boner uh, Ferry. And after an initial delay, to use National Guard arm, uh, armed personnel character, carriers. Soon the, uh, thereafter, the Idaho uh, State police arrived on scene. I'm sorry if I messed this word uh, Idaho up. I can never get that right. But I think it's Idaho. Idaho. Yeah, it's Idaho. I'm saying it right. I'm just delirious. FBI headquarters in Washington, D.C. reported by uh, sending a hostage rescue team from 
Quantico to Idaho. That I'm glad I don't have to say that five times fast. Special agents in charge, uh, Eugene Glenn of Salt Lake City FBI office was appointed a site commander and respond, uh, responsibility for all active individuals from the FBI, ATF, and U.S. Marshals. A standoff ensued for 11 days as 700, uh, several hundred federal agents surrounded the house and negotiations for surrender were attempted. Sorry. Um, the standoff was only resolved by civilian negotiator uh, Bo Grids, to whom Weaver uh, agreed to speak. Through Grits uh, meditation? Mediation. Mediation, Harris, who had earlier urged Weaver to end this suffer, uh, end his suffering, surrendered on August 30th, Sunday. He was removed by a stretcher, and then he was flown by Air Force Medical Evacuation Helicopter to uh, Sacred Heart Medical Center in Spoken. Weaver allowed... Uh, oh, Weaver was allowed to re removal of his wife's body, who a sniper had shot earlier. FBI uh, HRT commander gave Grits a deadline to get the remain, uh, remaining Weavers to surrender. And if they did not surrender on the day of the deadline, he said he was robbed the standoff by watching the tactical assault. Weaver and his daughter surrendered the next day. Both Harris and Weaver were arrested. Harris was in serious condition at Sacred Heart, but U.S. Marshals did not allow his parents to see him or talk by phone until Monday evening. After the uh, federal court order uh, was issued, Weaver's daughter uh, were released in the cuffs of the, of the relatives. Federal officials considered uh, charging Sarah, who was 16 as an adult. Weaver was transferred by military helicopter to an air, uh, airport at Sandpoint. And from there, he was flown by U.S. Marshal Jet Boise to Boise. There, he was given a brief uh, medical examination at St. Luke Medical Center. He was held at uh, Ida uh, County Jail and arranged for fo uh, in federal court the following day, Tuesday, September 1st. Now, this is the trial. Uh, Weaver and Harris were charged with various uh, offenses. The trial of the U.S. District Court in Boise began April 1993 and uh, was present over the judge or presided over by Judge Edward Lodging. Weaver's defense attorney, Gary Spencer, rested his case in mid-June without calling any witnesses for the defense, instead seeking to convince the jury through the cross-examination aimed to discredit uh, government uh, evidence and witnesses, which wasn't that hard. Uh, Weaver was only acquitted in July of all charges except missing, uh, missing his original court date and violating his bail conditions. For which he sent, uh, he was sentenced in uh, October to eight mo uh, months imprisonment and a fine of ten thousand dollars, credited with time served and, uh, and good behavior. Weaver served less than sixteen months and was released uh, from the Clay uh, Cannon County Jail on Caldwell in mid December. Harris was de uh, defended by attorney Davy Neville. Nevin, and was acquitted of all charges exactly five years after of the uh, uh, exactly five years after the incident on August twenty first, nineteen ninety seven. He was indicted by Bowler County Prosecutor Dennis Wold, uh, Woodbury 
for the first uh, degree murder of Bill Dungan, but the charges were dismissed in the early uh, early October on the grounds of double jeopardy because he had been acquitted in federal criminal uh, trial on the same charges in 1993. Now, after all this, the civil lawsuit, Randy Weaver and his dollar filed wrongful debt suit uh, for $200 million, which was related to the killing of his wife and son. And in an out-of-court settlement in August 1995, the federal government awarded Randy Weaver $100,000, and it also awarded $1 million to each of his three daughters. The government did not uh, admit that it had committed any wrongdoing in the deaths of Sammy and Vicky on the condition of anonymity. <laughs> oh, big word, bad. I know what it says. Anonymity. Anonymity. A DOJ uh, Department of Justice official told the Washington Post that they believed that the Weavers uh, would have probably won the full amount if the case had gone to trial. Attorneys for uh, Harris presented Harris civil suit for damages, although federal officials vowed that they would never pay someone who had killed the U.S. Marshal. A U.S. Marshal. In September 2000, Harris was awarded $380,000 settlement by the government. Basically, they didn't, they wanted to cut ties. Now, he's indicated as a global terrorist, and this, this whole whole thing that ended up with ruby ridge and everything the reason why i bring it up is because a lot of people right now are going against government on both sides of how much horribly they uh treat things which i'm going to go in on a uh on a couple of stuff after do some research on what the hell episodes but i hate to tell everybody that these people are people humans they make mistakes people do that now what they thought they were doing at the time was the the federal agents was wrong and instead of going through the right process to get things through i mean there's always back in the day there uh in old tv shows and everything oh you pick up a, a low low level person you flip them you get information and then you come back that was that was actually their go-to of how to make a case back in the day and it bit the u.s government on the ass on this one uh really bad because they tried to do the same thing discredited them it's it's sad they used to do that and they still do that somewhat but they have everything documented nowadays but it's just sad oh, what the hell was that I, I'm about to park it up off of that anyways uh, yeah, I guess get your ducks in order when you go through court that's the only thing I can go through I literally jumped and I, I, I forgot what I was thinking about but anyways, everybody, uh, thank you for listening. If you're listening on Spotify, uh, Apple Podcast, give us a like, five stars. I don't know why, but our stuff doesn't take one star. It might. Don't test that theory because we don't want that theory to work out. <laughs> but Apple Podcast, five stars. Give if, if you can give us a comment, give us a comment. That would be really appreciated. It helps us out a lot. Share it with your friends that uh, think they might like this type of stuff and everything like that so they can give us a listen and see if they like it. And uh, Take a look at our Facebook, which our Facebook page has Angry Me Production 2 right now because we're trying to put – we kind of got like a – we're in 68, uh, 60 days and counting in Facebook, Jill, because – 
someone doesn't like our post. But we have an Angry Me Production 2 page that you can go to and check out. Anyways, thank you for listening, everybody, and I hope you enjoyed.